Namaste. Namaste and welcome to this short yoga video. This is just a warm up practice and it's designed to be done wherever you are, requiring absolutely no equipment. So if you find yourself traveling or staying with friends and you just want to do something that keeps your body moving and your energy flowing, then this is the ideal practice for you. So we're going to start with the feet a uh, comfortable distance apart, a little wider perhaps than your shoulders and nice and soft in the knees. And then just transferring your weight from side to side so that you feel your connection down into the floor. And wherever possible, try to practice with your feet bare or even on the grass or a sandy beach or something like that so that you can really connect down into the feet. When you come to center, just allow your weight to settle in the center, firm your belly, lifting into the crown of the head and then gently twisting side to side. This is Kati Chakrasana, the rag doll. It's a wonderful practice for releasing postural tension from the back of the body. And it requires both strength and grace. So we have strength in our feet, our legs, and the center of the body, and grace through the shoulders, elbows, wrists, and fingers, which are loose, the arms wrapping the body and tapping the body. Allow your head to follow the movement if it feels comfortable. If you get dizzy, you can keep your head centered and keep the eyes on one spot. When you're ready, you can bring your hips to stillness and use the strength of the legs to keep them still as you twist the upper body. And you'll feel that that movement comes into a different place in the body, requires a little bit more effort in the center, maybe has a bit more effective release across the upper back. And then when you're ready, you can gently pivot on your toes, letting the hips flow back into the movement. And the legs become a bit more involved. Still a gentle lift through the belly muscles. Still that wrapping and tapping. When you're ready, you can add a soft bounce to the knees. And bouncing in the middle and twisting. And, knees and, twist. and perhaps touch the opposite shoulder in front of you and the opposite hip behind you. And in some disciplines, this is done for quite a few minutes at the beginning of class. So if you enjoy it and it feels useful for you, remember that when you come to do this practice again, you can do this part for a little longer. For now, we're just going to uh, lose the bounce and the pivot, bring our feet to steadiness and sway gently back to center. And as you come to center and stillness again, stand really tall, maybe closing the eyes or gazing gently downward. And just make a note of how that feels in your body. And that stopping and taking notes, that awareness of the practice is all part of yoga. When you're ready, you can blink your eyes open if they've been closed. Standing really tall, we're going to bring the right ear to the right shoulder and then take the head back through center and left ear to left shoulder. Just gently going from side to side, nice and slowly, feeling the effect of the movement and the connections into the side of the neck, the chest, the back, perhaps into the side of the face, the jaw, the ear. The next time your head comes to the left, just resting there, making sure that both shoulders are releasing down. They don't have to be forced down, but just not creeping up. And then here, if it feels good, you can press your right palm to the floor. And if you feel like you've got even more space, you could do with a little bit more length here, just gently lifting your chin and lowering your chin. Nice and slow. Maybe one more. And allow your chin to come down and the head to come to center. So the chin is on the chest, relaxing the right arm and then bringing your head upright again. Roll your shoulders if you need to. And then taking your right ear to right shoulder. 
If you need a bit more, pressing the left palm to the floor. And if you feel like you've got more room to move still, just gently lifting the chin and lowering the chin. Very slow nodding action here over to the side. Shoulders releasing down. And this time as the chin comes down, bringing the chin to the center of the chest, relaxing the left arm. Give yourself a gentle smile and then come back to upright. Roll the shoulders a little bit backwards and forwards. And then we will do something a bit more uh, pronounced for the shoulders themselves. So as I said, this is completely without equipment. So we're trying to make our movements mean enough to the body or to, to uh, engage through the body. And that's what we're doing with this next practice. So moving your left shoulder, just the shoulder, round in a circle. And we're coming forward, up, back and down. This is the more useful uh, rotation, uh, direction rather. If it feels good with the shoulder, you can use your whole, your elbow to make that um, circle. And if it feels good with the elbow, you can use your whole arm. But you can do any of these. You can stick with the shoulder or stick with the elbow. When you do this movement, just making sure it feels okay in the body, and then if it feels good, firming the belly and the buttocks and the legs and allowing the rest of your body to move as your arm moves. And that is less fatiguing for the shoulder itself. And it allows us to make different shapes with the body. So we make a side bend, a back bend, a twist, a forward bend. And you can do this really slowly if you like to really feel the things that are engaged in this movement. And you can make this movement as big or as small as feels good to you. You might build into a more expressive movement. If anything is sort of popping or crunching or grinding, making smaller circles more slowly to engage more musculature as you go. At the, when the, your arm comes down to your side this time, just resting and in the center, taking note of how the body feels one side to the other. It should hopefully feel amazing on one side and the other side wanting to go. And then we roll the right shoulder. And be aware that this rolling forward, up, back and down might feel differently on this side. If it feels good with the shoulder, you can try circling from the elbow. And if it feels good with the elbow, you can try your whole arm. Try to relax the opposite side of your body. I'm not always so good at doing that, but hopefully you are. And if it feels good with the whole arm, firm the feet, the belly, the buttocks, and just allow the rest of your body to join in. And here you can really feel those connections. What supports the movement in your body? What switches on? And you feel that forward bend, rotating twist, side bend, back bend. Make your movements as expressive as feels good in this moment without strain, without forcing or creating any discomfort in the body. Let's do two more. And then allowing your arm to rest down by your side, just giving yourself a little shiggle, 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 it's a Scottish thing. Um, and then feeling the effect of your practice it should feel awesome through your whole body. Uh, and then we're going to bring the feet together or towards each other. They don't need to be absolutely together. And here, using a point of focus ahead of you that's not moving, coming up onto your tiptoes, maybe using the arms as well, and then down onto your flat feet. Up onto tiptoes, as high as you feel able, and down onto flat feet. A little softness across the knees, perhaps here. A little lift in the belly. And this time, when we come up, we're going to stay up on the tiptoes. And then let the left arm come out to the left, perhaps even turn slightly to the left. 
and back to the center, still on the tiptoes. And then right arm out to the right, maybe look a little to the right and back to the center before releasing the feet down. As you come down this time, just softening your knees in a nice gentle bouncing bend. And then we'll do the same again, coming up onto tiptoes. This time you can turn your whole body, both arms to the left and then back to the center. And then turning your whole body, both arms to the right and back to the center. And then releasing all the way down, a little softness through the knees. Rolling the shoulders again, shaking out the arms, shaking out the legs and shake out the arms if you like. And then having done that with our legs, we're going to do a little chair pose. So feet can be anywhere, any distance apart that feels good for you. Hands onto the hips, roll the shoulder blades towards each other. Find that lift through the front of the body. We're trying to open the chest with that action across the upper back. And then here, breathing in. As you breathe out, simply bend your knees. You might glance down and just make sure your knees are over your feet. Perhaps you can see your big toes. And then here we're going to tuck the pelvis under and backwards. So front, front and back, or forwards and back, that's the word. So a little wriggle of the pelvis forwards and back. With the knees bent, you get a lot more movement than you would with straight legs. And we're trying to find the center between all the way tucked under and all the way tucked out, which is where we're going to rest. And this is our neutral spine, but lifting in the belly muscles, maybe even gently drawing the pelvic floor upwards. If it feels good, you can take your arms out to the side and maybe imagine yourself holding a large beach ball over your head with the shoulders softening down to create this breadth across the chest. Take a deep breath in, a deep breath out. And then from here, fold forward so your knees remain bent. You're sticking your bottom out on the way down and just coming into a forward bend. And here we've got the knees bent as well. So we, we don't want to, to work to straighten the legs straight away. You might like to do that if it feels good to you. As you come down, perhaps you can touch the floor, perhaps not. It doesn't matter. Just allow the back of your neck to release. Have a gentle lift of the belly muscles and hold elbow to elbow. Here with the additional weight in the arms, you might like to maybe gently nod your head or turn your head from side to side. And if it feels good, you might like to sway your upper body from side to side. So we don't want to move from the hips, but we want to move possibly from the, the waist or the base of the spine. The hips remaining still, really relaxing in the back of the neck. And it should feel good. So if it doesn't feel good, then don't do it. Just remain in stillness. When you've done a bit of swaying from side to side, you might come back to the center. If your hands don't touch the floor, you might use a block here, but if you don't need to, uh, then you can gently wiggle the legs, uh, maybe lengthening and then bending the knees again. And then once we've done a bit of that, we're going to make the feet a little bit wider and turn the toes out and then come into whatever squat works for you. So you could have your heels up if it makes sense to do that. You could be a lot higher up. You could use a chair in front of you just to uh, give yourself some support or a wall. And then in whichever, whatever squat, whatever shape it looks like, just giving a little wriggle from side to side. If that doesn't feel good in your hips, it probably need, means that you need to do a little bit more nurturing for the hips. But a little wiggle from side to side. If you're keen and it feels comfortable and you're low down, you can roll to the outside edges of your feet, take the left hand down, press the upper arm into the inner thigh and reach the right arm up, doing a nice little twist. You can do a smaller version of the twist if you prefer. And then come back to the center, same thing, taking the upper right arm into the inner right thigh and lifting the left arm up. And then coming down. And then we're going to come down onto the floor, making the hands and knees shape and just giving yourself a little uh, wriggle here in cat pose. We're going to inhale as we look forward. 
gliding with shoulder blades down and exhale, rounding through the spine, tucking under, lifting the back of the body up towards the ceiling. Let's do two more of these, inhaling and exhaling. Nice and strong across the belly muscles, inhaling and exhaling. From a neutral spot, you might do a little side to side, right shoulder and hip towards each other, left shoulder and hip towards each other. Now, um, I have a teacher who calls this thigh cat, which is very nice, a nice stretch down the side of the body. And then we can do all four of those movements together. So we can lift the spine, take the right side of the body to the right, the front of the body to the floor, the left side of the body to the left, the back of the body to the ceiling. And as we do this, don't forget your head is part of, your neck, sorry, is part of your spine. So your head should move as well. Shoulder blades gliding around on the upper back to provide a bit of internal massage. And going the opposite way when you're ready. You get a little um, movement across the shoulders as well, which is very, very nice. A little soft in the elbows. Sassy cat. <laughs> when you're ready, you can come to a sort of up cat position, tuck the toes and take a really gentle downward dog. So here, a little um, easing of one heel towards the floor and then the other as you soften the opposite knee. Pressing the chest towards the thighs, let the back of the neck be nice and relaxed so the spine is long from tailbone to crown. A little lift in the belly muscles. And then when you're ready, just coming down into any comfortable kneeling or seated position. You know, shake out the wrists if it feels good. And that's you, you're done, ready for the day. You might like to take a short rest, lying on the tummy or taking child's pose or lying on your back before you move again. Uh, but that is uh, a very nice way to just move through the whole body, making sure that your energy is not blocked up anywhere and that you feel revitalized for your day ahead. I hope you enjoyed the practice. I look forward to practicing with you again. Namaste.